Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Vin, and I'm a postdoc at the National Library of Medicine at the NIH. Uh, today, I'm going to present the paper Context and Rich Learning Models for Aligning Biomedical bi Vocabularies at Scale in the Yamales Method Thesaurus. So, this is the work. Uh, I collaborate with uh, our colleagues at the uh, University of South Carolina and the uh, Ohio State University. Um, before uh, I describe the problem we address in this paper, uh, I will just um, explain to you a few key concepts in the uh, YMLS. So uh, in the uh, YMLS, uh, what it does is that it integrates over uh, 200 uh, biomedical vocabularies. And from each source vocabulary, uh, a string is assigned to an atom, or we call it like uh, AOE, or uh, simply like uh, atom unique identifier. For example, headaches, headaches, and cranial pains, each of that is an atom. And each our strings is uh, lexically processed into a lexical form uh, called Louis. This is done by the uh, lexical tool in the UMLS. And each source vocabulary is assigned to uh, one semantic group, usually one, but uh, in some case, it may have more. And if the two AOE strings are synonymous, they will be assigned to the same QE or concept, unique identifier. Like here you can see that um, all the three headaches, headaches and cranial pains, they are synonymous and being assigned to the same uh, QE. So here, uh, I would like to uh, describe the uh, UVA task or the UMLS vocabulary alignment task. So given a set of uh, source vocabulary, as I explained earlier, we have over 200 vocabularies. And each source concept from a source vocabulary will have uh, the source name, the source QE, uh, the string, the atom string and the semantic group. So, the uh, problem we are addressing here is that given a pair of tuples like that, uh, how do we determine if they are synonymous? For example, the question can be, is um, the headache from the Snow Snowmet City, US, synonymous with the cranial pains from mesh? There are a few challenges that we face in this task. The first one is coming from the uh, large number of vocabularies that introduce the, the scalability problem uh, for the full size or full scale of the UVA problem. We have about 8.7 million square pairs. The um, uh, another kind of uh, challenge that is the domain diversity. The atoms or terms from the source vocabulary, they are from all the biomedical domains being included in the UMLS. Uh, in our prior work, we have developed two approaches. One is called Rubey's approach approximation or RBA. The second approach is the lexical learning, learning model. So here I will show you the uh, first approach that we developed earlier, the RBA. So in the RBA, we de develop a set of logical rules in order to determine if the two our strings are synonymous or not. The first, uh, here I just present two rules uh, for the limited times. Uh, if you want to see all of them, you can read our, our uh, reference paper from the last year. In the source synonymy rule, if the two are strings sharing the same source QE, then they're synonymous. That means the synonymy is determined by the source vocabulary. For example, headaches 
and cranial pins from mesh, they are synonymous because they have the same source QE uh, from mesh. In the second rule, lexical similarity and semantics compatibility, compatibility rule, the two our strings are normalized the same by the lexical tool and share the same semantic group, then they are synonymous too. The headaches and headaches from SNOMED CD and MESH, they are synonymous because they have the same lexical form uh, and they have the same semantic group. So these are the two examples of the rules that are uh, included in the rule-based approximation uh, process. The second approach that uh, we develop for the UVA task is the LexLM uh, based on the lexical uh, models. In the LexLM, we have the, um, uh, we develop a neural network based on the Siamese architecture that takes uh, two inputs, uh, which, which are the two atom strings uh, they are tokenized and truncated and uh, converted into input IDs. So these uh, input ID vectors are fed into a, a sequence of layers in the uh, architecture. So we use the by vec embeddings uh, for um, for the uh, for the word embedding, and uh, we use the uh, one layer of FSTM above it. The out, the out, the two output vectors of the layers are fed into the Manhattan distance to compute the score and, and then uh, derive the similarity between the two items. The uh, LexLM, uh, from our previous paper, the LexLM outperform the rule base by large margin. Uh, however, the LexLM doesn't utilize the contextual information like semantic group or source synonymy. Therefore, we believe that uh, the LexLM can be improved further by incorporating the context into the LexLM. So that is what that is how, uh, how we got our motivation to develop the approach for this paper. So in this paper, uh, we uh, develop the approach that we incorporate the context into the uh, lexical learning model to improve the performance. So here we use another example, like cold from SNOMED CD US and cold from the NCI. So if you just look at the lexical form of the two items, um, you cannot determine if they are synonymous or not. So in, in this work, we extracted additional information about the atoms, including the source synonymy, the um, uh, semantic group, and the uh, hierarchy to uh, add into the uh, lexical models to help distinguish the terms that are highly similar. We have three objectives in this paper. The, um, the first one is the uh, improving of the, the performance of the lexical models by adding different semantic, uh, different contextual information. The second objective is to investigate whether we should include the contextual information collectively or individually. And the last objective is to evaluate the performance of the resulting models uh, on the pairs with different levels of lexical similarity. This diagram show our approach for incorporating context into the existing model. Here you can see that uh, from the two cold and cold uh, atoms, what we did was we extracted the contextual information like the source synonymy, the semantic group, and the hierarchy. So 
we can we constructed four variants of the KG or contextual uh, knowledge graph. That is uh, CONSS, uh, SG, and uh, HR for hierarchy. And the last one, the core all, that include all of them. So we have four variants in total. Each variant of the uh, Khan KG is fed into um, the training of the uh, of one of the seven knowledge graph embedding technique, including like Transy, Transar, Rascal, uh, Dismond, uh, Khan KB, Kof, KB, so on. So. The output of the uh, knowledge graph embedding uh, is going to be fed into the uh, dense layer and concatenated with the uh, output vector from the LSTM layer of the existing model to form a new contextualized embedding for each atom. And similar to the uh, existing model, these uh, the two uh, vectors are fed into the dense layer and then the Manhattan distance function to compute the similarity score between the two uh, atom vectors. And based on the, the score, uh, it is it decides whether the two atoms are synonymous or not. So this is uh, how we incorporate the contextual information type into the um, existing lexical models. For the evaluation, uh, we use the data set uh, generated from the uh, previous paper. The, we use the 2020 AA uh, version of the UMLS. Uh, we limit the vocabularies to be active subset and only use the English as the language and the atoms are not being suppressed. For the ground truth of the pairs, like the two items uh, from the same QE form a positive pair. And the two items are not from the same QE, they have formed negative pair. Uh, this table show the size of the uh, data set that we use for the training and testing of our approach. Uh, for the training data set, we have uh, about 118 million pairs uh, in which we have about 100 million uh, negative pairs and uh, nearly 17 million pairs for the positive. For testing the generalization of our model, we have four variants of the testing data set. The gen all include the pairs from all of the uh, level of lexical similarity. And the top and seam, ran seam and ran no seam, they represent the pairs with a high, low, and no uh, similarity among the, um, um, between the pairs, between the items in the pair. And the, the second table show the size of the uh, Con KG uh, for each variant, the number of uh, entity relation and um, the number of triples. You can see that the number of relations is uh, very limited, only three, like to represent uh, the three variant of the uh, source synonymy uh, semantic group and hierarchy. For the uh, experimental evaluation, uh, as I explained earlier, we have four variants of the contextual knowledge graph to be evaluated. Um, CONSS, SG, HR, and R. And we would like to evaluate if we should include this um, contextual information type individually or collectively. For training the knowledge graph embeddings, uh, we evaluated seven uh, techniques, even though like in the literature, uh, we have uh, many of them, but uh, we selected these techniques because um, they are suitable to the characteristic of our data set. 
Therefore, we have about 28 variants of the Khan KG embedding trainings. And subsequently, we also have 28 variants of the Khan LMs. So given the size of the uh, training and testing data set, um, the training time for each model is about uh, three to five, uh, about five days uh, for each. Therefore, we just run it once and report the result. In the table, you can see that like, we have three um, a table representing the result of training with the complex train Z and whole E uh, with the uh, gen all with the overall uh, generalization test. From here, uh, what we can conclude, what we observe is that uh, the con LM uh, obtained the highest performance gains, which is about like 2.88% compared to the Lex LM. Uh, the Trinity and Holy, they also obtained the superior performance compared to the LexLM, but it is lower than complex. For the second objective of our uh, study, uh, we, we found that uh, the um, uh, call all, uh, including all the contextual information type does not always the best uh, perform best um, compared to the individual type. For example, for the whole E, you can see that the, on the right that con KG outperform the call R. So for this, it really depends on the techniques uh, that we use. And given that the exper in the experiments, we did not uh, perform an exhaustive comparisons among the uh, techniques. So these number, like the, 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 the conclusion we can make here is that the call does not always perform uh, the others. In the last objective of our uh, study, uh, we evaluate the performance of the resulting model on the pairs with a different uh, level of lexical similarity. So here you can see that the like, top seam, uh, ran seam and ran no seam. And uh, we observe that the top end uh, seam or the pairs with the highest level of lexical similarity, they obtain the highest uh, performance gain compared to others, the other two. The, other, the low level or no similarity, their performance also improve, but not as much as uh, the first one. So um, from our study, uh, we conclude that uh, adding the contextual information type into the lexical models does improve the performance of the learning model. And including all the context type does not always outperform a single context type. Uh, again, it depends on the techniques that we use and we may need to perform um, an exhaustive comparison in order to uh, conclude the and the last, ex the last uh, point is that uh, the high level of lexical similarity um, benefits most from the uh, contextual information addition. So our work has been uh, sponsored by the National Library of Medicine Intramural Research Program, and uh, we use the BioWolf at, uh, at the NIH for the evaluation. Thank you. Uh, for many thanks, many thanks for your clear presentation. So we only have a few minutes for questions. So yeah. uh, is anyone interested in writing in the chat any question for Bean? If not, let me start with my question. So you are saying that you are using contextual information, but the definitions of the quiz and the definitions of the semantic types and the semantic groups are very informative, particularly if you take the, this definition from the NCI or from s not met So have you considered also to take all these um, semantics that it can be extracted from these definitions? So uh, I think that is uh, that is a good question. I think we will consider that uh, in the in the project for now. I think like given that um, the, the the definition, like you said, they are good in in uh, a few uh, source vocabularies. 
However, that is not consistent across like all the vocabularies that uh, we, in, we, we work on. So we would like to choose the features or the characteristic that uh, most of the vocabularies will have to develop our approach based on. But that would be like the one that you suggest would be like good uh, if we, uh, we uh, limit the scope of our work to, in, to align the vocabularies uh, that you mentioned. Yeah. Okay, and is your similarity right now you have the Manhattan distance? Is this approach yes. agnostic of a similarity? Have you tried with similar sim with the similar distance or similarity measures? Uh, we did try uh, in another study, like another paper, we did try uh, replace we replaced the Manhattan distance with the cosine similarity, and surprisingly, it didn't give good result. So that is why we use the Manhattans until, until now, yeah. It's important to know why, right? Because this is a characteristic probably of the, the embeddings that you are generating. 